for our feature presentation. This morning we have an interesting subject, which probably is not as generally known as might be desirable. In antiquity, the first sciences to be developed were mathematics, astronomy, and music. In various ways, in various degrees, in various modes, these ancient forms have been disseminated throughout the entire world. From the most primitive people to the most exalted, sounds, rhythms, and various artistic pursuits have developed and gradually risen to the degree of fine art and classical music. It's math mathematics was the beginning of it all. And the mathematical symbols, as developed by the Pythagoreans, probably derived from India, was the science of organization. It made possible a classification, an integration, of all of the different forms of phenomena in nature. Mathematics enabled us to get the problem of time, to uh, find locations, uh, to add up various problems and formulas indispensable to the advancement of science and equally indispensable to the advancement of economics. So mathematics was really a wonderful development. We do not know who actually originated it or the first great mathematician, but we suspect it may have been developed either in India or ancient uh, Egypt. In any event, mathematics is a science of exactitudes. It lifted things out of doubt and generality and resulted in a formation or a formularization of knowledge which has continued to support our various activities from a very remote time. Now astronomy was not possible until mathematics came along. And mathematics took the universal system that we see around us and began the gradual organization of it. That is, it did nothing to change the system but to organize our concept of the system. It began to reveal to us the really wonderful universe in which we live. It's gradually revealed to us that things were not accidental, that there were laws and rules governing practically every procedure and function of the universe. The combination, therefore, of mathematics and astronomy added together formed what has been called astrotheology. That is, religion based upon the supporting evidence of nature. In other words, it was possible to decide certain values, moral and otherwise, because of their symbolic place in the natural world around us. We began to realize, for instance, the very simple fact that there aren't many accidents in the, in the functions of universal law. We began to realize the effects that follow causes and also the timing of cycles. We began to develop the theory of protecting agriculture through, the know, through knowing the seasons and uh, all the different forms of planting, reaping came to our attention and were integrated into a pattern. It all added up to one simple fact. We were living in a wonderful universe ruled by something. Now what it was ruled by was still a little dim because the physical form of the universe uh, seemed to be all that we could find out about it. But gradually there came to the realization of these people that the physical universe was a symbol. That the processes which exist and make the universe a symbol are invisible. And gradually out of the contemplation of visible things, we began to recognize the need for invisible forces behind these things. We could see bodies, but we couldn't see the life in them. But we could find out something about it by watching its effects in the material world. We could not control completely our integration of the vastness of the universe, but we were able to gradually create a series of laws by which we could obey the simple phenomena of life. And out of this uh, research, this thoughtfulness of primitive people, we have the moral code. The moral code is based firmly upon universal laws, laws that men never quite understood fully, 
but the results of which came to their attention every day, until finally they were forced to accept the causes because there was no other way of explaining the effects. So little by little, knowledge increased. And then there came a quite an interesting division in this problem. Namely, knowledge considered on the one hand as beneficial, and knowledge on the other hand as dangerous. It became obvious that knowledge brought with it power. And it is also an, a fact that was known to very ancient people that power is temptation. And power can lead to most of the disasters which can occur to the human being. Therefore, knowledge without ethics, skills without integration of consciousness, the individual operating in the material universe without sensing the responsibilities which are involved in existence was a danger and a menace to the rest of society. There was no way of once withdrawing knowledge that had been given. Once the knowledge was available, nothing could put it back again into secrecy. The only answer to this problem was to keep it secret from the beginning. Now, the problem of secrecy was largely in the hands of a philosophical priesthood or perhaps we might say a great theological structure. This structure was dedicated to non-profit. These uh, teachers and philosophers were dedicated to the service of humanity and uh, were free from all the temptations of personal aggrandizement. These in turn decided to censor knowledge so that it might be safely communicated. Knowledge that could not be communicated would die with the original owner. Therefore, there had to be a way of handing down knowledge from one generation to another. And as time went on, it had to spread from one nation to another until it finally reached the circumference of the entire planet. So to do this successfully, there was something had to be done to protect those forms of knowledge which by exploitation could become a menace to the survival of peoples. This story is more or less also unfolded in the uh, platonic account of the destruction of Atlantis. In, a, in Atlantis, skill became greater than morality. Power took over. Ethics was compromised. And finally, the entire uh, continent destroyed itself. The misuse of knowledge must end in tragedy, must, es must end in disaster. And if this disaster is not curbed in some way, it could topple over our civilization. So the ancients decided the one way was to put certain restrictions upon the dissemination of knowledge. These, dis uh, these restrictions uh, added up together formed a kind of system of instruction, which came to be known as the mysteries. These mysteries were schools, universities, colleges, dedicated to the preservation and dissemination of knowledge under 